This video covers chapter 11 in the textbook, and in particular, section 1, called the Fundamental Counting Principle. Uh, the objective of this video is to use the Fundamental Counting Principle to determine the number of possible outcomes in a given situation. And I'm going to show you lots of different examples, some of which are taken straight out of your workbook. Let's say you have two different colored jeans, a blue pair and a black pair, and you have three different colored t-shirts, a gray, yellow, and a blue t-shirt. How many different outfits could you wear? Well, if you look at the picture to the left, that means you're going to wear the blue jeans with the gray t-shirt or with the yellow t-shirt or with the blue t-shirt. So there's three different ways. Or if you choose the black colored jeans, you can wear it with the gray t-shirt and the yellow t-shirt or the blue t-shirt. So there's three other different ways. That gives you a total of six different outfits. Well, instead of having to draw the picture each and every time, you could use this idea called the fundamental counting principle, which says if you can choose one item from a group of M items and a second item from a group of N items, then the total number of two item choices is simply their product M times N. Well, we drew a tree diagram earlier, but this tree diagram shows that there are two times three or six different outfits, two pairs of jeans uh, created from two pairs of jeans and three t-shirts. Here's another example. Let's say a restaurant called Greasy Spoon offers six appetizers and 14 different main courses. How many ways can a person order a two course meal? Well, choosing one of the six appetizers and only one of the 14 main courses and using the fundamental counting principle, we're simply going to multiply six times 14, which is 84. So there are 84 different ways that you can order a two course meal at this restaurant. Now, the fundamental counting principle says that you're really just multiplying your number of options together. So what if you had three or more? In this case, we have three different options. We have a, we have a different pair of jeans to choose, different pair of t-shirt, and now what if I throw in uh, two different pairs of sneakers to choose? Well, again, the fundamental counting principle says you can just quickly multiply your number of options, two times three times two, two pairs of sneakers, uh, gives you a total of 12 different outfits for this particular example. So it's not restricted, the fundamental counting principle is not restricted to only two groups of items. You could have more than two. Here's another example. Let's say that next semester you're planning to take three courses, a math, an English, and a humanities course. There are eight sections of math, five of English, and four of humanities that you may find suitable. So assuming that, that, that there won't be any scheduling conflicts, how many different three course schedules are possible? Well, again, according to the fundamental counting principle, you're going to take the number of options of math courses that you have, which there are eight, times the number of English courses that you have, which there are five, times the number of humanity courses that you have, which there are four, and you can multiply those together to come up with 160 different three course schedules. All right, here's another example. Let's say you're taking a multiple choice test and it has 10 questions. Each of the questions has four possible answer choices, A, B, C, or D, and only one of those answers is correct. If you select one of these four choices for each question and leave none of the questions blank, in how many ways can you answer the questions on this multiple choice test? Well, in this case, for each question, you have four different choices, four different options that you can make. You can either choose A, B, C, or D. And since there are 10 questions, it's four choices for question one, four choices for question two, four for question three, et cetera, all the way down to 10, which according to the fundamental counting principle says we have to multiply all of those different options. This is really four to the 10th power or 1,048,576 different ways of answering just a 10 question multiple choice test. That's amazing. That's why trying to guess your correct answers on an exam like the SAT 
is nearly impossible. You should know some of those correct answers so that you're not guessing the whole way down. Okay, here's another example. Um, how many four-digit odd numbers are there? So first of all, the question has to have four digits, right? And as far as digits are concerned, as I mentioned here in the parentheses, each digit, for each digit, there are 10 possible options. You could either choose a zero or a one or a two or three or four or five or six or seven or eight or nine. So we have 10 different digits that we can choose from since we're using a base 10 system. Um, well, there are some restrictions when you have a four digit odd number. One of the restrictions is that the first digit cannot be a zero. If the first digit is a zero, then you do not have a four digit number. It's only a three digit number. So any digit can be used for the first digit except for zero. The other restriction is that the last digit has to be an odd number. It has to either be a one, three, five, seven, or nine, which gives us five options for that last digit. So if you multiply nine times 10 times 10 times five, you get 4,500 different four digit odd numbers. Now, again, the nine is coming from, right? The nine here is coming from this particular case that we have nine different digits that we can choose from for the first one. We cannot use zero for the first one. That's where the nine is coming from. Um, the, the five at the very end is coming from the fact that we have to use one of we have to use one of these five digits at the very end of the question. So that's where the five is coming from that you see here at the very end. And it turns out that for these two middle digits, there are no restrictions on them at all. We can use any one of these 10 digits there. So that's why it's times 10 times 10 here in the middle. The only restrictions were on the first digit and on the last digit. If I had asked the question this way, how many four digit even numbers are there? Well, it turns out as far as even numbers are concerned, we actually get the exact same answer. The only difference is that we wouldn't be using a one, three, five, seven, or nine at the end, but a two, four, six, eight, or zero at the end. But you'll see that we still have five different options to choose from for our last digit. So just because the question is only asking for odd numbers does not mean that, uh, that our, our answer is going to be any different. Okay, another example. Telephone numbers here in the U.S., we all know, begin with a three-digit area code, followed by a seven-digit local telephone number. Area codes and local telephone numbers cannot begin with a zero or a one. So how many different telephone numbers are possible? Again, for each digit, um, we can choose zero through nine. Okay, so let's build out this situation here. This question involves making choices with 10 groups of items, right? There are three digits in the area code, seven digits in the local telephone numbers. That's a total of 10 digits. And as far as the area code is concerned, we have to use, um, we have to use any number at the very beginning here, except for a zero or a one, right? Those are our options here. We only have we only have eight choices to make because we cannot use a zero or a one in that first digit. Same thing for the first digit in the local telephone number. We cannot use a zero or a one. That's why it's eight sitting in that spot there as well. However, for the other digits, there are no restrictions whatsoever. That's why there are a bunch of tens that you see sitting there. Well, if you multiply all of this, it's a lot here, but if you multiply all of this, it gives us a grand total of 64, sorry, that's, yeah, that's 6 billion, 400 million different phone numbers. That's amazing. The fast way to do that, by the way, is just to take eight times eight, which you know is 64, and then count the number of tens that you see here in this problem. 10 times 10, that's two of them three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that means we need eight zeros after the number 64. So 64 followed by eight zeros gives us six billion, 400 million different telephone numbers. Here's another example. 
Let's say in New York that license plates are made up of three letters followed by four digits. And the question is, how many different license plates can be made if repetition is allowed? Okay, so um, we need three letters and four digits. Since there are 26 letters in the alphabet and repetition is allowed, well, this turns out to be 26 times 26 times 26. That's how we can get three repeated letters. And the word and, by the way, you're going to see this later on in a future section, but the word and simply means to multiply, right? It's simply a multiplication sitting there. So uh, 26 times 26 times 26 times and the four digits, again, we have no restrictions on those. Repetition is allowed is 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 or a grand total of 175,760,000. What if I ask the question a little different? What if I say, okay, same thing, three letters and four digits, but this time repetition of letters and digits is not allowed. In that case, now where our restriction is a little bit more on, on the, the, the two remaining letters and the three remaining digits. You'll see what I mean by that here next. In this particular case, for our first letter, we have a choice of 26 different letters of the alphabet. But once we choose a letter, right, let's say we chose the letter F, like you see here in the license plate, then F is no longer allowed to be repeated. Therefore, we're down to 25 choices for our second letter. In this case, it looks like we chose A for the second letter. That means now F cannot be used, A cannot be reused, because repetition is not allowed. That means for our third letter, we're down to 24 different letters to choose from. Same thing for the digits. We have 10 to choose from for our first digit. Once we choose one of those 10 digits, zero through nine, now we're down to nine and then eight and then seven. So this is what it looks like if repetition is not allowed. 78,624,000 different license plates.